Hi, this is Michael Jones, Chairman and CEO of Caravel Concepts. Welcome to Market Insights, our weekly commentary on financial and economic events. Let's get started. This week, we're going to do another in our series of topics that have a big impact on financial markets, but that tend to be politically sensitive. Now, for the last several weeks, markets have been freaking out about the potential for there to be inflation. And you can almost not turn on the news without somebody worrying that we could be headed for the 1970s and another bout of high inflation that really depresses financial market returns. And it seems like almost right on cue as equity markets are starting to teeter and wobble and sell off because they're worried about inflation, lo and behold, we have a gas shortage, which is caused by completely different reasons. A gas pipeline shut down by ransomware, but nonetheless, people remember gas lines from the 70s, and it creates this uncomfortable memory. And then, right on cue, we have another burst of tragic, awful, violence in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, the conflict that's been going on for 70 plus years. And this is another thing that investors remember from the 1970s, that when that conflict heated up, it prompted uh, oil embargoes, which led to huge increases in energy costs, which led to part of the inflationary problem that we dealt with throughout that decade. So. What we thought we would do this week is we would talk about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Not to offer any solutions. Goodness knows there doesn't seem to be many of those about. But so that investors understand the historical context of this conflict and maybe understand why it has been so difficult to solve. And in doing that, we're going to kind of do this in two parts. Part one, the current uh, video, we're going to talk about the long historical context of this um, conflict. Because I believe if you want to understand today, you really need to go back in time and understand history. In our second video in this series, we'll dive into the events since World War II, the very specific path that led us to this current intractable, seemingly, uh, conflict. Now. As we go through this discussion, I want to point out, I am not a professional historian. I am not an expert on the Middle East. I am somebody that has just had to read a lot and think a lot about this conflict because this conflict has so frequently destabilized financial markets. So let's talk about the ancient history of the Middle East because I think as everyone knows, this is where ancient history really, really happens. And as I talk about the specific role of Israel and the Palestinians in ancient history, I want to be clear that I'm not going to be going back to Adam and Abraham and Moses because there's a big conflict between what archaeologists say might have happened based upon their perception of the evidence and what biblical scholars say and I'm not going to wade into that swamp. We'll start at 1000 BC, which is where pretty much so the archaeologists and the biblical scholars start to agree. And one thing in the historical context that's, that's helpful to understand, this is the Mediterranean, this is the ancient world, this is Egypt and the Nile, this is uh, what is modern day Turkey, it was called Anatolia for most of history, um, here is Syria, over here is Iraq and Babylon and all that. So what is, should immediately leap out to you is that this part of the world that is modern day Israel, over here is a lot of desert. Over here is a lot of water. Up here is powerful Hittite kingdoms going back you know, 3,000 years. Over here are powerful Assyrian kingdoms. Over here are the Babylonians. Over here are the Egyptians. If the Egyptians wanted to trade or fight with the Assyrians or the Hittites 
or the Babylonians wanted to trade or fight with the Egyptians, they're not going through the desert. They're not going, they may go through the water on a ship, but their armies and a lot of their caravans, they've got to go right down through here, through what we call modern day Israel and Palestine. It is one of those unfortunate highways that have been incredibly important for world trade and world conquest. And therefore it's been a center of conflict for a long, 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 long time. And about a thousand BC, give or take, um, there was a kingdom formed from the Hebrew speaking Semitic Israeli people. And we know this because there were kingdoms up here and over here who carved in stone, I've been fighting with the people of David. So you don't have to believe the Bible. There's actual archaeological evidence that there was a kingdom sometime around here. And anybody who knows their Bible or knows their ancient history knows that from about 1000 BC to about 550 BC, there was a lot of tragedy. There was uh, the northern kingdom fell and was taken off to slavery in, uh, in Assyria. There was all kinds of falling away from God and coming back and prophets and so forth. But pretty much so. For give or take about 500 years, the Hebrew people, the Israeli people, ruled this part of the world. Right? And then they fell to the Babylonians, and a lot of them were taken off into captivity. And then the Persians allowed them to return and rebuild their temple. But there was no question that you were ruled by the Persians. You were no longer, the Israeli people were no longer masters of their own fate. They were answering to the Persian Empire. And then Alexander the Great rolled through and they were now, they were conquered by and they had to answer to a bunch of Greek speaking uh, descendants of, of uh, Alexander's general. And there's another little red box right here, about 180, 85 uh, BC. Uh, there was what was called the Maccabean Revolt. And the Jews rose up against their Greek-speaking um, overlords, and they won. And they won their independence. And for about 100 years, they were, they ruled again. And then the Romans rolled in, and you know what the Romans do? They conquer you. But if you ever wondered why Jesus' disciples were always asking, are you the Messiah that's going to restore the Jewish kingdom? It's because their fathers and grandfathers could look back on a time when actually the Jews got to rule themselves. All right. But that's not what he was about. And the uh, Romans continued to rule. And right, right around, you know, between 70 and 125 uh, AD, they had rebelled so many times against Rome. And Rome got so fed up with them that Rome said, we're kicking you out of Palestine. Now, they didn't actually kick everybody out, but they did actually forbid Jews from coming into Jerusalem. And this is when Jews were scattered all over the Roman Empire, all through this area. And that's when they kind of, they lost control and lost it pretty much so for good. All right. Greek speaking people, Christian empires, the Romans, they rolled, ruled it through here. They were called the uh, Byzantine Empire at the time. They ruled it out of Constantinople all the way to about 650, uh, 640 AD. And why is that important? Because that's when the cultural descendants of the Arabic Islamic speaking, the Arabic speaking, mostly Islamic Palestinians, that's when they took over, about 640. And they ruled for the next 500 years, give or take. And then the Crusaders came in. And the Crusaders conquered and they ruled this part of the world for about a hundred years. And then the Mamluks came in and they were ruled out of Egypt for about a hundred years, for several hundred years. And then the Turks came in and they ruled this until World War I. All right, why do I go through all that ancient history? The reason is, is it matters a huge amount to both the Jewish and the Palestinian population. And it also puts in context part of this current conflict because both sides want this piece of real estate. 
Both sides believe they have a right to be the ruler of this piece of real estate. But if you look back, it has been almost 2,000 years since before the 20th century, it was 2,000 years before there was really a Jewish kingdom that was ruled by Jews in this area. And it was almost 1,000 years since there's been an Arab rule in this area. They're both looking way back in time in order to sort of justify their right to rule this part of the world. All right, now, the Ottoman Empire was center, centered here and ruled all of this spot right here. And in World War I, they entered into the war on the side of Germany and against Great Britain and France. And that has huge implications because during World War I, the British Army was wanting help fighting the Ottoman Empire. They wanted um, Jews to help them and they wanted the Arabs to help them. And you say, well, wait a minute, after the diaspora, were there many Jews here? And the answer is yes. Because in the 1800s, there was a movement called Zionism. And it was like all the Jews all around the world were saying, you know, we get so abused, they're pogroms, we have no rights, we've always been, uh, you know, uh, we're a second class citizen. Why don't we go back to Israel? Why don't we go back to Jerusalem? We won't rule it, the Ottomans are ruling it, but hey, at least we'll be in our home place. So there was a huge return of Jews during the 18, late 1800s to what is now modern day Israel. All right, so when Great Britain is fighting the Ottoman Empire, they want some help. And so they do two things. For the Jews, they, they release the Balfour Amendment. Excuse me, the Balfour Declaration. The Balfour Declaration basically says that we, the British Empire, the most powerful empire on earth, we believe that the Jews deserve a homeland in their traditional home of Israel. We're going to look back 2,000 years, and what they're really doing is looking back about 50 years and all those people who poured in there that they could possibly get to fight in their army. But we're going to say they have the right to a homeland here. All right. At the same time, and if you've ever seen the movie Lawrence of Arabia, they're telling all the Arabs down in here and over here and up here, they're saying, you want to fight with us because we're going to allow you to reestablish the Arab kingdom. You remember that back in, you know, a thousand years ago. They made promises to two people that couldn't possibly be kept simultaneously. And while they're making these promises to the Jewish and Arab people, you can go back to ruling Jews, you can go back to ruling Arabs, they were also negotiating with the French the Sykes-Picot Agreement, which basically said, I don't care what we're telling the Jews, and I don't care what we're telling the Arabs, we're going to divvy up the goodies in the Middle East between France and Great Britain, because oil has been discovered there. And Lebanon and Syria were uh, parts that, that France really, really coveted. All right. So this is uh, at the heart of the current conflict is promises that were made. The Ottoman Empire is going to break up. And as the Ottoman Empire is breaking up, the, the Arabs are hoping to see a return to their glory days of a thousand years ago. And the Jews are hoping to see that independent homeland that they rule and they have control over their destiny that they had 2,000 years ago. And neither one of those promises were kept. Instead, Britain take over all this. And they put up puppet kingdoms in a lot of the Arab states that were basically made sure that British petroleum got access to all the oil that they might need. And France got Syria and, and France got, uh, got Lebanon. That's the situation rolling into World War II. And where Britain is, Britain controls this. And we, you know, we don't need to go into the history of World War II. I'm sure everybody knows, you know, Nazi Germany fighting, you know, the Arab sided with the uh, German Germany because they felt like Britain had stabbed them in the back because Britain had. 
and the Jews were clearly not going to side with Great Britain, so they sided with, um, uh, excuse me, they clearly weren't going to side with Nazi Germany, so they sided with Great Britain, and that set the stage for what happened in the immediate aftermath of World War II. And the other thing that clearly had a huge implications for what happened after World War II was the Holocaust and the murder of six million Jews and the attempt to exterminate uh, the Jewish civilization, the Jewish race. And so here we are sitting at, at the end of World War II. Britain still has control over this. They have, the Jews have fought very hard for the British during World War II, and they are expecting after the Holocaust that the Balfour Declaration, the promise that was made to them that was never kept, they're expecting that promise to be fulfilled because they've endured mass murder and they are no longer content to have their destiny determined by somebody else. There's just one huge problem, is that there are millions of Palestinians who see a very, very different future for themselves after World War II. Thanks for joining us for Market Insights. We hope you found it uh, informative. If you did, could you like the video and share it with your friends? Also, be sure and tune in next week where we take this story to the modern day. We set the roots of modern day Israel and an understanding of how this conflict has intersected with oil price spikes and with market turmoil repeatedly over the last 70 years and over the last seven days.